in the center of every European town. We have a green man on a green horse. And today we're in a new city. We're in one of my favorite countries in the world. Welcome to Sweden, you guys. We're in Momo. So in Romania, one of the things that I showed you in Bucharest was how cool their covers were. Now check this out. Momo has the same thing, you guys. We have a bird with a crown. So this is the crest of Momo. And it was given to the city a couple hundred years ago. Let's look at that, look at that. These are. Hello! We start our journey off today in Malmo at St. Petersburg Church. And all of the B-roll will show as I'm speaking in this little spot because I don't know where else to speak and show you this very tall steeple for all of these people. So this church was built in the 15th century. Yeah, it's like from the... Editor's note from me of the future. I just lied to you. I meant that St. Peter's Church was built in the 14th century. So while today this is a Protestant church, it wasn't always a Protestant church. See, it changed to Protestant Protestantism whenever the Reformation was running through Europe. So, this is old. If this is old and this is still standing in such good form, we should see what else is here because I'm certain there's some pretty cool stuff here. Let's explore. So here I am, walking down this beautiful street right across from the church. And what do we see? Boobs! Boobs! At least the boobs. Nowhere to go to pray. Guys, Sweden is great. Who sees this anywhere? <laughs> oh, if you haven't been here, you should come. Although small, strong she is. Sort of wise British poet. And I feel like that's exactly what Momo is. So this is a very beautiful fountain that's not on because it's still winter. And this is a very old building that we're going to learn about in a little bit. But until then, let's appreciate it. Appreciation time. As you'll see, the architecture all over the city looks very Danish. And the reason for that is that Sweden used to be a Danish territory, and it wasn't until the 1600s did Sweden gain her independence from the Danish. But by then, the architecture styles and the building had already been established, and the buildings were here. So why change them? I mean, look how pretty these are. The building in front of us right now was built in the 13th century. This, I believe, I hope I'm not lying to you again, is the Tunlin building. And there's some very important people at the very top of the building. Now, I assume that's similar to how we have org charts in today's businesses. This is how medieval times did org charts. Very important people go on top. And everyone else goes through these very pretty doors. Let's go inside. Walk this way. You and me. Bang, bang. Words are serrano. I guess. You and me go this way. Bang, bang. So say you get a little bit sick. Okay, I've had my round of sickness. Well, if you had to go to a drugstore that looks like this, I'm pretty sure that you'd be sick all year round. Now just look at that. Isn't it cool? 
I don't think you can see it yet because my camera is. So as you can see right here, there's so many outdoor seating areas and patios. And yes, there's heaters everywhere. One thing I really like about Sweden is that basically if it's not raining, you're sitting outside and you're enjoying fresh air. And that's fantastic. Now check this out as we exit the passageway. So we open into this beautiful area with a lion and the horsey. I don't know why the lion and the horsey are there. And this beautiful restaurant and building. And we now enter the Momo Theater. Let's see if we can see inside. Can you see inside? Is it full? Maybe we can see inside this one. Check that out. That's inside the theater. Okay, so I can see inside. And I don't think my camera caught it. It's super cool. So it's a pretty old theater. Let's see if the port is up here though. No. 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 Poor Desirado. Oh. All of the cool buildings are Serrano because it is early. We are in Sweden, so the sun rises earlier than other parts of the world. But what's not Serrano is the solarium that's open all day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. This thing is a huge here. So basically, how the sun beds work, you go in and there's a machine. There's no one stopping it. So you go in, you put your you put your bunny in for a machine, and then you go into whatever area you want to be in, and then you have a nice warm session for however many minutes you're in there. Okay, let's go in this 4C. 4C hallway. You guys, check this out. We have a face here on top of the drama theater. Another face here. It's like the happy, sad face of theater. I love this. Mm -hmm. Hi. Jackal? Maybe Jackal and hi. Okay, I need to tell you some Swedish lore. So in Sweden, there's this thing called Lopus. And in front of us, we see Lopus Lounge. Now, Lopus is usually not in such a store. What is it? Well, in the UK, we call it a car boot cell. So in the summer, basically what happens is that you bring everything that you're not wanting into a certain place, and it's usually done by neighborhoods. And you just like sell, you trade, or you do whatever you don't need anymore. So what you find at these places is like a bunch of kids clothes that are too small for your kid and you're trading up or you're trading down based on the size of your kids. Sometimes you find sporting goods equipment for stuff that you know you don't need or old dishes or paintings or whatever. So Lopez is actually pretty cool because it just enables a lot of reuse. Oh, that's a really cool haircut. We're not going to go inside. I'm gonna play to like that one day when I grow up. So yeah, Locus is a very cool thing. Um, in some ways, it's not like secondhand shopping because I feel like a lot of secondhand shopping in the UK has gotten a little bit out of hand and a little bit too trendy. Like this is the legit, the legit thing. Um, in North America, we'd probably call it a garage sale or a yard sale. So yeah, I just call different things, different areas, and well. How did you enjoy staring at my piece of the Um Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now you know a little bit of Swedish look. Now in front of us, we see a drunk bicycle. Dun dun! This bicycle had way too much to drink last night. I think we should help to put it up. Okay. Let's hope that person comes back for their bicycle in the morning. It looks like the tires were flat and then maybe it didn't get home so well from the bar establishment. And I will tell you the brewery culture here in a second, but first we're going down the street. Okay, so I mentioned there's a bunch of patios and a bunch of places to socially drink here. Well, one of the reasons for that is that like many other places and countries, alcohol is nationalized. 
So if you want to buy any sort of alcohol, you come to the system, the system, and you buy your alcohol. So it's not open on Sundays, and on Saturdays it closes at 3 p.m. So if you want to drink on Sunday, you kind of have to plan ahead, go on a Saturday and get all of your stuff. Monday through Friday, it's usually open until like 5 or 6 p.m. So this is a place that if you're working in Sweden, like some of us may have done, you go at lunch, you grab whatever you want to grab. So then you can have your nice wine or your nice drink for dinner. Now, I just saw this building and I think it's pretty cool. This is the Pickwick, the, the, the Pickwick Pub, which was built in 1885. And I think it's about time I tell you the importance of the 1800s and Mambo. Let's look inside. No, we can't look inside. So as you know, in the 17th and 18th century, a huge industrial revolution was going throughout the UK. Well, what was happening to the rest of the world is that they were figuring out like who owned what countries and that sort of stuff. During this time, the UK was going and capturing, capturing, occupying, whatever, stealing other countries that it probably shouldn't have still. So Europe was trying to figure out like their dividing lines and that sort of stuff and also built to keep up with the UK. At the time, the UK was probably a threat to actually taking over the rest of Europe and just becoming the whole, the whole UK, which kind of would have been sad. Um, this looks like a pretty, so let's go in this city. So, in the 1800s is when a bunch of industrial revolution was happening here, especially in Malmo. So they were bringing in all sorts of people, all sorts of workers, because we're really close to the ocean. And the importance of that is that it's one of the biggest seaports. It's like the biggest seaport in Sweden, I believe. That could be wrong. Um, huge center though back then for innovation and for all sorts of stuff. Oh, this is a nice part. Check this out. Guys, I think we should get this into this tree. So let's go. Wow. This tree is sick things. Okay, now let's go explore more. Now that we have tree knowledge in us. I need a try going for that. Oh, look at these flowers. They look fake. Check this out. I have, don't know if the camera's gonna catch it. This is the brightest orange that I've seen. Hi little guys. You realize that it's like not a swimming pool. You're just sitting on the floor. <laughs> There's legit water like 30 meters to your left, man. But okay, just sit. I feel like these ducks. So these ducks are sitting in this little fountain and the fountain is all of five centimeters deep. So maybe they're just wetting their feet or something. One thing I really enjoy about Sweden is how peaceful the graveyards are. Now, I love the graveyards in the UK, but they're so overcrowded and packed. And because Sweden is a pretty small country with a low level of um, people populating it, the graveyards are nice and spread out. And I feel like that here, truly, if you are deceased, you can rest in peace because you're not cramped within another person's grave and you're not built on each other. I mean, just look at all of this. You can see right now this park is kind of empty. I mean, there's a lot of people here running and walking their dogs and walking their kids. But in the summer, what you'll see is like every green space here will be filled with picnics and with all sorts of lawn games and all sorts of fun. And it's one of the things I really enjoy about Sweden because there's fun for everybody. And if it's warm outside, you're outside. And if it's cold outside, you just put a bunch of clothes on and you're outside. 
So if you enjoy the outdoors, then you'll probably enjoy the beautiful place. I have no idea what this is, but I think it's very cool. And it looks like we have a little artwork portrait in here. Water art. Mm -hmm. Kinda sounds like something that should be in an ABBA song. Waterloo! Waterloo! So it's time to learn more a little bit about the history of Momo. The tiny little history that I know. So, whenever Momo was part of Danish rule, it used to be the second largest city. In fact, it was the most fortified city of all of Denmark. And while that happened, there's really only one massive fort left, and that lies in front of us. So this fort was built in the 15th century. And as Sweden was working to gain her freedom, this fort was used to help ward off the Danish people. See, in the 16, middle 1600s, Denmark and Sweden signed an agreement that said, hey Sweden, you can have your own area and we'll keep our own area and we'll stay off your land. Well, Momo was something that the Danish people just did not want to let go of. That's how cool this city is, you guys. So the Danish people fought for it for another 25 years until finally in 1677, the Swedish army, military, the Swedish army people, whatever, whatever they're called, um, defeated the Danish. And then after that, a lot of reconstruction was done to regain Sweden as herself. So let's go inside here. We're gonna check to see what a fort built in the 1400s look like from the outside. Now just imagine like before all of the cranes and all of the stuff that we have to build today, this would have been massive. Birdie, 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 no. Oh, this is cool. Okay, we're gonna go check out this map. So this is a tactile map of Malmo in the 1600s whenever this fort was existing. So you can see here that it's built in the Danish, um, get out of the shadow. It's built in the Danish style. So in the center you have the fortress and then you have a couple of surrounding moats around it. So these are where the artillery towers would be. And then the very outside is in the circle or the shape of a star. If we get to Copenhagen, I'll show you this like actually how it would have been. This is built. This has been preserved, and the outside isn't necessarily still in this clear star shape, but in Copenhagen and also in the Shetland Islands, we see stuff exactly like this because, you know, Denmark was, Denmark Kingdom was pretty big back then. So then this is where the fort would have been, and then this is where all of the city would have been. This is the St. Peter's Cathedral where we just started, and then this is a super old building that we saw that was built second oldest. And then this is a massive square. And then you can see like how this whole area would have also been a fort because you see all of the star stuff around. So there, you just learned a bunch about Danish and Swedish history in like 30 seconds looking at a map. Isn't that cool? So Sweden is great, like really, really great. But there's just like the most random things here that sometimes don't make any sense at all. Like for example, this random piece of pavement that's made its way in a full form onto the side. But, and there's no hole. Like there's no hole where they should have come from. Just why? Like how? Why? Why, Sweden? <laughs> like what happened here? I want the full Surrey. Yeah. No idea. Just random pavement. And there's no like break of pavement anywhere else. In full form. Well, this is pretty. We have a little MDMA area. You can sit on the drive, sit on the bench, and then look at this beautiful scenery. Which you can see there is the little fort that we just saw. And another thing about that fort I forgot to tell you. So, this also used to be the castle of Sweden, but then it was moved to somewhere else, and so it lost its castle status. So. Now it's just a very cool entity that's up kept. Up kept. This area though, 
I don't understand why we have MDMA on the floor and just benches, benches I get. So today, Malmo is the third largest city in Sweden. And very similar to Aberdeen, the third largest city in Scotland, it's a very international area. So the average age here is about 35, which for like the rest of Sweden and for many cities these days, that's really, really, really weird. Because in Europe, uh, the population is depopulated. And so usually the average age is around 45 in most cities around here. But because it's 35, it means that Momo is actually still growing. In probably about 10 years, the population is going to be around half a million. That's massive, especially considering that in 1900, population here was only like 100,000. So as Sweden's only maybe 8 million people total, that's huge. And along with other, other random facts about Momo, um, as the city is growing, it's also attracting more international people from a lot of areas. Now, it's really diverse though. Like it's not attracting them from one specific area. You have people from all over Europe, from all over Asia, a little bit from North America, but not so much. And I mean, wouldn't you want to live here? If you had the opportunity to just like have this outside your front porch and have the ability to go for beautiful walks, I mean, I moved here for a reason. For that reason, Sweden will always be home. So in front of us, we have the Maritime University. One of the many universities here at Malmo. And we have a Speedy Racer. Go Speedy Racer, go, go, go. Bye Speedy Racer. So check this out. We got two women up top. And then below we have a dude and a chick. And this building was built in 1904. Now, it's really hard to see how awesome this is and how big it is. But like up here we have little patios. And then at the very top there's like a crown with some nice crest engravings and marble stuff on it. And then this door down here. Check out that work. Why can't we have buildings like this everywhere? This is beautiful. Okay. Won't be able to breathe tonight. That's okay. It's so much. See, where else do you get this? Maybe Japan. The buildings here are pretty cool, aren't they? So I found a group of people who are on a mission. So we are also going on a mission. But of course, following with a safe distance. Because I'm identifiable. Ah, hey guys, look. A post box. Post nerd is the post system here. So if you want to mail something, you just drop your little letter in there and it goes to the destination. And that's a very beautiful little building that is extremely washed out, but you can't see it, I can see. Let's go read a sign. Because my Swedish is coming back. And I'm becoming useful again. There has to be a sign up there. Okay, now you can probably see it. Nope, nope, oh well. We have a very washed out thingy. I think I see a sign. Well, it is another church that was built in 1880. And I can't read that high. It's pretty. Do we think it's open? Let's check. Nope. Why is everything Serrano? So I found a sign. And the problem with this sign that it's not Swedish. 
about <gasps> my tour group has decided they're going the wrong way. I think we should follow them again. But I really want to see what's down this way. So my tour group is going that way. I want to go that way. Well, I'll go that way a different day. I'd prefer to see where this magical trip is taking me. Is it creepy? Maybe. But everyone else is following someone. Like you have a child following an adult. You have cars following each other all over the street. I'm just doing the same thing, except I am on my feet. Every country, every city has its own humor. And this, I cannot stop laughing. Check this out. Very nasty momo. Thanks, Sweden. Okay, so funny thing number two I need to show you about Sweden. So in most places, there's people who try to break into buildings. Well, here, people try to break out. Yes, this is from the inside. Instead of using the door, which is nicely placed there, we have someone who decided to try to break out of the building. Now, I don't know why they would do that. Just use the door. Maybe it was those shoes that were the culprit. Who knows? Why would you want to break outside of the leap of park? So say you need a little bit of everything in your life. Well, I'm going to show you the staple that I lived at for the everything that you need when I used to live here. We'll see if I end up recording or not. Ugh, I'm almost falling off again. Um, okay, we'll see if I end up speaking in here. But this is actually a really cool store. So we're gonna go in to Olin City. Mm -hmm. On the bottom floor of Olin, you can basically get any sort of makeup brand, any sort of hair product, which is why I never take stuff with me when I travel to Sweden, because I can just come here and buy it. Like everything you need is here. And then there's all sorts of jewelry. And if you don't know what ring size you are, you can just come over here and try on a little hook. Shoes are fashionable. We've got the same muted colors as it is in the rest of the world. Let's go. Selfie with the mannequin. Selfie with those mannequins. Well, I have learned a new thing today. You cannot film inside the Olins. Oh well. <laughs> but I met a very nice gentleman who told me, and he was very nice about it. So, oopsie. So yeah, Olins is very cool. I'm looking at this sign here. So about an hour ago, I saw one of these signs just ripped out and like laying by the side of the road. And of course, being a good citizen, I took my, or I took the sign and placed it in the garbage can so it wouldn't roll over anything. And I don't know what's up with that, but maybe, I don't know, if you know why no one likes that sign, drop a comment and let me know, because I'm very, very interested. So, where would you go buy something if you just need like a snack or some water or whatever, or a bus ticket? Presbrin! Do I need a snack or some water? Or a bus ticket? No. Okay, so check out where we're at. We have this nice, cute little yellow wall by us. And I found a part of the top here, though. Look how cute this is. This is where you put your shoes in the sop room. I think we should go inside this very magical green door. What do you think? Well, we're going in. So I can't tell you how good it smells in here. It's very beautiful. And it smells like art. Now that was really cool. 
not so great for videoing, but B-roll is showing a very cool thing that was showing like modern textiles and modern ways of weaving. Um, I love museums that are terrible for film, but that are awesome just like for immersion. So that's exactly what that one was. Now, we're off to our next very exciting destination because in the time between like clips and stuff, I've also had lunch. So I'm back for breakfast or whatever the food is. Oh, this is a fluffy. Look at this fluffy, you guys. Check out the fluffy. Isn't it pretty? Okay. Now, let's go for the next destination. So, we are now approaching our next destination. Now, this destination has gotten a lot of one-star reviews on the internet. People are just weird and decide to do that. So, what stands in front of us is a bunch of reusable straws and a speedy eraser. Go, speedy eraser, go! Go, go! So, this is the Modern Art Museum. And I think we should go inside and see if it's exactly worth one star or if it's worth more. So, let's first touch straw. It's for Mother Nature since no one else has a mouth that big. Maybe except for politicians. Politicians are usable straws. There's all of these secret little doors around here. I opened one and look what I found. A massive workshop. Look at these. Little arts and this massive thing. This looks like it would be a oh, look at all these little potteries. My guess is that you can rent this out if you're a school and you can create cute little potteries. Oh, artists in training there, man. Okay, that's more my type of art. It's like what's across the uh, the church. Bobis. So, was that worth one star? No, that was really good. I, don't know. I have no idea what people are on with these one star reviews in art museums. So it was super well laid out. There was a lot of room in between photos. So like if you, I guess art pieces, they weren't photos. Um, so if there was a bunch of people in there, you didn't all group around one area, and you had so much time just to sit and appreciate the artwork. There was a really good distribution of sitting areas too. So I've walked a bunch today, and it was really nice just to like sit, look at some cool stuff. Um, the end part, I didn't finish recording that room because it got so intense, like it's so real. So a lot of towns that have high immigration like Momo, um, sometimes there's a bad reputation with immigration, but like we only see it from one side and that's from the native side. There's very few looks on, looks? There's very few things that people look at on how it is to move to a new place, like to rip up everything you had, pack up stuff into two suitcases, even if that, and bring your family to a new place where you don't know the land or the language or how anything works. So I really liked that it did a great description of how it is to be an immigrant, how it is to be an expat. And 10 stars, you should go. And hopefully those bonus stars make up for everyone who's given it a one star review. Now, we're gonna go and continue to, oh, uh, fire hollow. We're gonna go and finish walking down this very beautiful river on this squishy path and find a bench to sit and enjoy some sun. Maybe my face will get a suntan. Well, that'd be a first since COVID. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned because you never know where we're going next. Ciao.